As a young physician, it's important to be aware of the many preventable errors that occur. Each year, it's estimated that hundreds of thousands of Americans die because of such errors. This is likened to two 747 planes crashing each day, every day. Learning from these mistakes and using strategies to prevent, recognize, and mitigate them may save lives. One such case occurred in 2003 as surgeons at Duke Hospital performed a heart-lung transplant on 17-year-old Jessica Santian. Jessica had restrictive cardiomyopathy and pulmonary hypertension and needed the transplant. But as the surgery was wrapping up, blood type results demonstrating a mismatch came back from the lab. Santian had received organs from a type A donor, which were quickly rejected by her with type O blood. She went into multi-organ failure, requiring prolonged bypass. Despite a second transplant with appropriately matched organs, she became sicker and sicker and died days later. Another notable case was Libby Zion, admitted to New York Hospital on a cold evening in 1984. She was febrile, confused, and staff described strange jerking movements. She was admitted for fluids and further observation and testing. An intern and resident, not focusing on her history of depression and believing she had a viral syndrome and hysteria, administered merperidine. Shortly thereafter, the intern went off to cover her 40 other patients, and her resident took a nap. As Libby became more and more agitated, the intern was notified over the phone and ordered restraints and haloperidol. By morning, her temperature was 107 degrees, and she shortly thereafter arrested. The fatal medical mistake appears to be failing to recognize serotonin toxicity from her antidepressant. More so, it was concerning that no one noted the interaction between her antidepressant and the merperidine that would worsen things. More so, there was concern that restraints and medications had been ordered without a bedside evaluation. And ultimately, it was felt that poorly supervised junior residents should not be taking care of so many patients after 36 hours in the hospital with little to no supervision. This case led to increased oversight of residents and interns and ultimately led to the work hour restrictions we have today. Another case involved Bill, a man with epilepsy who had a seizure and crashed his car into a tree, badly crushing both legs. Arteriography revealed that his right leg was salvageable, but that his left leg was not. Unfortunately, due to a technologist error, the films were mislabeled, with the left leg being labeled as right and the right leg being labeled as left. On direct examination, both legs were so bad that the orthopedic surgeon didn't notice the mistake and amputated Bill's right leg. Preventing wrong-sided surgeries has become one of the main safety goals of JCO. Using checklists and double-checking and a systematic protocol helps to reduce such errors. Another such case is Linda, a woman who might be very commonly seen in our emergency department, first trimester pregnant with hyperemesis. The vomiting had left her dehydrated and hypokalemic, and so potassium was ordered and administered. However, a mathematical and dosing error and the use of highly concentrated potassium resulted in Linda arresting within an hour. Since then, patient safety groups have drawn attention to the need for the removal of concentrated potassium from patient care areas, using premix solutions, keeping potassium separate from other drugs, and using warning labels have helped to reduce such errors. These cases serve as reminders that mistakes may be inevitable but we have to recognize our biases and shortcomings and use systems-based approaches to prevent, recognize, and mitigate them.